Greetings, folks. We are here in El Dorado Hills, California, but long before it was called El Dorado Hills, back in the mid-1800s, it was called Clarksville. This place was overrun with miners and all kinds of small farms, so we're gonna go in search today of some relics of the past, exploring Clarksville. Let's go. If you happen to be in California, heading from Sacramento towards Lake Tahoe on Highway 50 and just passing through El Dorado Hills, if you looked out your passenger side window as you climbed the grade towards Bass Lake Road, you might think you were looking at someone's ranch, an old red barn and some outbuildings. That's what I thought for years, but the red barn was, at one time, a one-room schoolhouse, and those outbuildings used to be the homes of the residents of Clarksville, a now deserted, honest-to-goodness ghost town. But wait a minute, this is a trike tour, so let's get off the freeway and approach Clarksville as many folks did in the 1800s and early 1900s on Old Bass Lake Road. This road went from Clarksville to Bass Lake and from there up to Placerville and Coloma. I don't know when the road was originally paved, but as you can see, it was a very long time ago. A full suspension trike would be a good idea, although my VTX is handling the bumps fairly well. The road is so narrow, two modern cars couldn't really pass each other. The early cars must have been a lot smaller than the Range Rovers and Mercedes that frequent the area now. To be fair, it looks like the elements are encroaching on the road to the point that it resembles more of a bike lane than a historic highway. This road was also part of the original Lincoln Highway and went right into Clarksville here before the new freeway construction bypassed the town. A real intersection between the past and the present. The old road waits for cars that will never come. But wait a second, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start at the beginning. And the beginning in this area starts in 1848 and the California Gold Rush. The creeks around Clarksville have many Native American grinding stones, 
where the local Miwok and Maidu tribes would grind their acorns and other foodstuffs, unaware of the rushing mass of people that were soon to swarm the area. When word spread that gold had been found at Sutter's Mill, the Native Americans were swept away, either by force or disruption of lifestyle, as the creeks, streams, and rivers in the area became filled with gold hunters. In those first two years, many of these treasure hunters did indeed find gold and made a good living until the surface gold had played out. But in that time, between 1848 and 1850, the Mormon Tavern was built. Built by a Mormon named Morgan, the Mormon Tavern was right down the hill from where the Clarksville Cemetery, which used to be called the Mormon Tavern Cemetery, is now. The tavern served an endless amount of miners and immigrants as they either came out of the mountains into the Sacramento Valley or they headed up into the mountains in search of gold. It was also a Pony Express stop in the early 1860s. A large structure with 21 rooms for weary travelers, reports of the time said it had a large dining room and saloon that would usually be filled with hungry teamsters. This is where the tavern stood those many years ago. It was burned to the ground in 1964 as a training exercise by the local fire department, and there's not much evidence left of its existence. The walls of the stone foundation and some scraps of metal scatter the hills next to the remains of an old fruit orchard. Near the tavern was a structure known as the nunnery. In the 1850s, nuns had come to the area, presumably to save the souls of the miners, and would meditate on a bench they had carved out of solid stone. The bench is reportedly still here somewhere, but I was unable to find it. The Mormon Tavern eventually was sold to the Jaeger family and became their residence. It was also a funeral home for the nearby cemetery before eventually meeting its demise. Traveling from the tavern towards Clarksville, which some say was originally named for another large tavern called Clarkson Village, others say it was named for one of the first settlers in the area, Luther Brown Clark, we see the remains of the old Fitch House. Alfred Fitch grew exotic plants and trees here, and from the looks of what's left, this must have been quite a residence. Like so many structures back then, the house burned down and the Fitch family moved closer into Clarksville. As we approach the center of Clarksville, we see the signs warning that the area is not open to the public. Once a year, in May, the public is welcome to come and take in what's left of the town during Clarksville days, so if you'd like to see it for yourself, time your trip accordingly. When crossing the creek into town, 
the first building that greets you is the Wells Fargo building. Built of stone, it was designed to protect the gold flowing in from the surrounding hills. The town of Clarksville was never a bustling metropolis, but for a time, it was at the economic crossroads of the area. First immigrants, miners, and teamsters coming and going, and then ranchers, and eventually cars of travelers moving across the country. Most roads heading east and west led to Clarksville, and at one time, it had four hotels, a three-story tank house, and a three-pump gas station and restaurant. All of these are now gone without a trace. Two things were to change Clarksville's fortunes forever. Highway 50 was rerouted in the 1960s and the new freeway cut off road access to the town. And possibly more devastating, the railroad, which was expected to run through the town, was diverted from Clarksville to Latrobe to avoid White Rock Hill. Many think it was the death knell for the town. Eventually, locals migrated to other towns. Most went to Sacramento, Folsom, or Placerville. It's easy to romanticize a town like this, but life here wasn't easy. An entry in the 1850 book, A Doctor's Gold Rush Journey to California, reads, Tuesday, October 29, 1850. Mormon Tavern, 6 o'clock p.m. Dr. Torrey died at 1 o'clock today. I have hardly the spirit left to write it, and I have been here more than an hour. Oh, what an amount of misery, suffering, anguish, heartbreaking, and crime this California humbug poured upon the world. It is a deluge of moral and physical evil. Amazingly, Clarksville didn't get electricity until the 1940s. PG&E wanted to run power across Joseph Yeager's ranch land, but he thought it would spook the cattle. Eventually, he capitulated, and power was run through his property to Clarksville and all the way up to Placerville. Most of the original settlers are here, in the Clarksville Cemetery, originally called the Mormon Tavern Cemetery. The Fitches, Clarks and Jaegers can all be found here. Some of the first gold hunters are buried here also, though their grave sites are unmarked. As I stand on this hill near the cemetery, and look out at the busy freeway, I wonder what the original inhabitants of this area would make of it. For me, it's tough to imagine what this patch of land looked like a hundred years ago. What will this view look like a hundred years from now? If you'd like, I can come back in a hundred years and make a follow-up video. I'll ride my futuristic trike up the hill with the e-assist by then, heck, I'll be over 150 years old, and with my 25K camera, I'll revisit this spot. See you then. Thanks for coming along for the ride, folks, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.